Hello, everybody, and welcome to session seven of our program evaluation class. Um, this session is exciting because we're switching away from the foundational concepts that we've been talking about, like logic models and inputs and outputs um, and validity and measurement and kind of the more high level conceptual ideas. Um, and this week, we're going to go back into statistics and we're going to look at how you can actually measure causal effects using both experimental data and with observational data. Um, today's the only time we're going to be really talking about experimental data. Um, the rest of the semester will be focused on observational data. And so we'll introduce one tool that you can use in conjunction with DAGs um, to be able to isolate a pathway between your treatment and your outcome um, using matching. So that's what we'll talk about today. So let's go over and look at the slides um, just to briefly outline what we're going to do. Um, we're going to first talk about why randomization is so important and why we care about this when we're thinking about um, causal inference. Then we'll briefly show how to analyze randomized control trials. If you do find yourself in a circumstance where you can run a good randomized control trial and only give treatment to some people who are randomly selected, um, the way you statistically analyze these is actually fairly simple. Um, you just find the averages in your treatment and control groups, subtract the differences, and see if there's a statistically significant effect. That's all. Um, there's no fancy stats models to do that. It's really just measuring two averages and checking to see if they're the same or not. Um, so we'll briefly show how to do that. Um, then we'll talk about this idea of randomized controlled trials being the gold standard. Um, in your readings, um, before you watch these lectures, um, it kept repeating this idea that randomized control, control trials are the only way to find true causal effects in the real world, um, and they're the gold standard of research. Um, but we'll talk about why that's not actually um, applicable and why this gold standard label isn't actually the most important part of randomized control tri controlled trials and that you can find causal effects in observational data. Um, that's why we're doing these DAGs. That's why we're spending the rest of the semester on fancy stats models to find causal effects in observational data. Um, and then our first tool for doing that is um, this idea of adjustment with matching. Um, so far, when we've talked about DAGs, we've found that when there are confounders um, that open up back doors between your treatment and your outcome, we keep saying you need, to, you need to adjust for them. And I've even told you that conceptually, you can think of adjustment as including a control variable in a regression model. That's a simplistic way of thinking about it, but I keep saying don't actually do that in real life. It's not fully correct. Um, there are better ways to adjust. Matching is one of these better ways. And so we'll talk about how you can actually use DAGs and the confounders that you see in DAGs to perform matching in order to then isolate causal effects. And so we'll see how to do that um, in the examples for today. And then this we'll talk about kind of the concepts behind it. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> 